come on, Hungry Jan, how are you doing today? Wow, I have to save the date because I'm going to be at that conference. That looks pretty cool. Hallelujah. <laughs> come on. How many has ever attended a Hungry Jan Race to Deliver conference in the past? All right, come on. Every year, Pastor, come on. That's awesome. You're here already for deliverance here today, and we believe that Jesus Christ is going to set you free here tonight. That doesn't mean that you can't come for the next conference. Bring your family. Bring those people who are bound in your life. Bring your friends. Bring that neighbor who always makes noise late at night for them to receive deliverance. <laughs> Praise God. So save the date. First weekend of November. You don't want to miss it. Hallelujah. How many are excited to be in the presence of God today? I sense in my spirit that there's quite a few of you that are feeling a little bit nervous as well. There's like, there's like in the air, there's a little bit of tension right now. You know why? Because this altar up here is about to turn into a war field. Jesus Christ is about to break the bondage of the devil. Jesus Christ is about to break the head of the snake. If that is you today, if Jesus is your deliverer today, can I hear you shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Praise God. I am excited to be here, people of God. I'm going to share a quick word with you and then we're going to go into the prayers. We're going to have some prayer of renouncing. We're going to have some mass deliverance. There's going to be an altar call and we're going to lay hands on those that have registered here today. We believe that Jesus Christ has come to set the captives free. And for this purpose, he came. Hallelujah. The title of my message today is For This Purpose. I'm going to read from the book of 1 John 3, verse 8. I'm going to open quite a few Bible verses today. I'm not going to read them all. But if you feel like you need to, you may take note and read them at your convenience at home. Uh, 1 John chapter 3. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. And then the second sentence says, for this purpose. Can someone say for this purpose? I don't know if you're convinced. Can you say for this purpose? The son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So I want to go through really quickly for you today. Maybe you're here and that Bible verse sounds really good and like, wow, yeah, that's cool and all. But what does it really mean? What is the works of the devil? I mean, it's easy to see. You look in out the world, war and stuff like that. That's the works of the devil, right? That is the works of the devil. But the devil also has an agenda. He's a strategizer. You think that the devil is some just fool walking around hoping that he gets lucky enough to strike someone down? He has a plan. First Peter says he walks around like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour. And that is why many of you are here today. Because we have gotten stuck in the plan, the strategy and the agenda of the devil to destroy us. The purpose of the devil, it says in John 10. Verse 10, he came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's his purpose. He came to, dis to kill our hopes, to kill our dreams, even to physically kill us if he can. Look at how many children. And I'm going to go there today. You know how many children the devil is able to kill before they even have a chance. His purpose is to kill, steal, and destroy. And here in this house, we don't hide the truth. We declare it on the rooftops. Because when you seek the truth, the truth will set you free. So I've done some research and I've found it that there is about five things that the devil works really hard on to bring people into captivity. The book of John 8, verse 44, it really states his intention from the very beginning. It says, from the beginning, the devil was a murderer and a liar. He is the father of lies and he has come 
He's looking to take you and I down. And he has a plan to do it. Many of us are here today and you have gotten stuck. You have gotten trapped. You've gotten uh, bound somewhere in the process of these five steps. Jesus Christ is here today to set you free. He is here to set you free. And as you're listening to my message here, I'm going to talk for maybe about 15 minutes. During this time, I want you to engage your heart right now. I want you to begin to pray like Jacob prayed when he wrestled with the angel of God. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let that be your prayer tonight. Say in your heart, Lord, I will not let you go unless you set me free. I've had enough of all this bondage. I've had enough of all this struggle. I've had enough of all this temptation, this hardship, this sickness and infirmity. Lord, I will not let you go unless you set me free. I will not let you go unless you do what you have promised to do in your word. One of the first things that the devil does, and I'm going to count all the five steps here. Moral temptation. The devil comes to tempt, to bring people down. You can read it in the book of James 1, 14 verse 15. It says that he presents temptation. Temptation leads to sin. And when sin is mature, it gives birth to death. So he wants to tempt us. Many of us have already fallen in the trap of temptation. We are unable to get back up. Maybe we have been influenced by this world. He starts luring you with the, the things of this world. Just like he did to Jesus in the desert. Come and see. Come and see. Just come and see what I've got for you. It's so good. It feels so good. And he gives you temporary pleasure. But he takes away permanent gain. And we get stuck in a cycle of repeated sin. Repeated addiction. You can never break out of it. Because you fell. You took the bait. And you're stuck today. Jesus Christ is here to set you free if that is you. The second step that he uses is physical affliction. Many of us are here today and we did a prayer of healing. So many people received healing already. And some of you are here and you want one more dose of healing during the prayer line. We will pray for healing just as much as we pray for deliverance. And let me tell you, if we look at the example of Job, the purpose of physical aff affliction. Listen to this. The purpose why the devil attacks our bodies with sickness is not for us to be sick. It's not the end goal. The end goal is when you have been weakened by that sickness. He will send a temptation. He will say, turn away from God. You know who he used to tempt Job? He sent his wife and he said, curse God and die. Now I'm not saying that every time your wife speaks to you, it's the voice of the devil. So don't misquote me, husbands. Praise God. Most of the time it's probably the Holy Spirit speaking through her, okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> but physical affliction, the end goal is not just for you to be sick. The end goal is for us to look at our sickness. And say, God, where are you in my sickness? And we turn away from God. And we say, if you don't heal me, I don't want to follow you. But Job passed and he said, though you slay me, I will worship you. You give and you take away. Blessed be your name. So we're going to pray for healing today. And we believe that Jesus Christ can heal you. He has already placed healing properties in our bodies. Sometimes due to curses, due to other things. That thing just needs to be recalibrated in your body. And your body will begin to heal by itself. The third step that he uses is intellectual contamination. So we've got temptation, affliction, contamination. And it's not hard to see how the devil is pushing an agenda to confuse us. People barely know who they are anymore. Who am I? What am I? What are you? What is my truth? What is your truth? And so many other distractions and vain purposes to distract us from running the straight race. From finding our true purpose which is to be grafted into.
to the vine. Psalm 1 verse 1 or verse 2 and 3, it says the biggest purpose of Christians is to be planted by the riverside. You know what it means when a tree is planted by the riverside? It has a never-ending connection to the source. It doesn't matter how dry it gets. I am right by the river. And some of us are here today and your mind has been defined. It's been contaminated. You've been going to school. You've been going to work. You've been going to these places. And you have fallen for the agenda of this world. We're in a month right now where the world is celebrating pride. The sin that kicked Lucifer out of heaven. We're celebrating it. What is going on? So that contamination of the mind where you're, 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 you can't think clearly. You don't understand the purpose. Maybe that is you today. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3 to 4 talks about it. How the devil tries to afflict our mind. I don't understand what's going on. The fourth thing that he does is emotional destruction. The devil knows that through trauma and abuse listen to this right now you know what your contact point is to Jesus what is your contact point to the Holy Spirit it's our heart the Holy Spirit speaks to our hearts so the devil came up with a plan that if I break the contact point between people and their God they will not be able to live in communion with him so many of us, we have a broken heart. We have a cold heart. We have a heart of stone. We can no longer have community with the Holy Spirit. And it's not your fault. It's the devil's fault. The devil did it. And he's getting kicked out today. So maybe that is you and you can relate. And you're like, yeah, I'm so heartbroken. And I don't even know how to relate with my father in heaven. Because my father here on earth or fatherly figures here on earth, they took advantage of me and abused me. How can I ever be transparent and vulnerable with my father in heaven? I know that my father here on earth was nothing. Or my mother or family member or teacher. And you're here today and you're feeling that disconnect from God. Because that gate, that doorway, the channel through which the Holy Spirit communicates with us has been broken. Our heart is like a radio. You tune it to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. But if someone comes with a sledgehammer and breaks that radio, how will you hear anything? How will you have relationship with the Holy Spirit? Some of us, as we are heartbroken, as the heart has been damaged, we hear a little bit now and then. A little bit of a sound. And you're like, okay, okay, I hear, I hear. Oh, he went away. The frequency is not constant because your channel... The gate through which you talk to the Holy Spirit has been broken. Jesus Christ came to heal the brokenhearted. Inner healing and healing of that channel is part of the deliverance journey. We have countless testimonies of people who receive healing, deliverance, breaking down of strongholds, receive healing in their heart, all right here at the altar of God. And the fifth one, which is the one that we, are, we love addressing, this one. It's a spiritual oppression. It's demonic possession. When evil spirits demonize us and they begin to afflict us and beat us down and torment us and beat us to our knees. Just like in Acts 16, when Paul and Silas was thrown into the prison cell. They weren't just thrown into the prison cell. They were assigned a jailer many here today you have been assigned a demonic jailer who keeps you in your bondage you've been assigned a demonic jailer that taunts you like Goliath and say, ha, 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 you can't do anything and they will stand up as if they're big and strong guess what the devil has made the greatest mistake for allowing you to come here today because this is an arena of liberty. 
this is a place where the Holy Spirit is in control, no other spirit. And at the mention of the name of Jesus today, every knee must bow. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. I have shown you the works of the devil in your life. Relate. What is that area that you know the devil has been attacking you so hard? Oh man, I'm so weak in this area. I've been broken so many times in this area. Maybe in all of them. John 8, 44 says he came to murder and to steal and to lie. But I want to tell you today, Jesus has come to set you free. To those of us today that are stuck in temptation, my God is Jehovah Kesed, the God who forgives. My God is Jehovah Mekodishkem, the God who sanctifies. And He will do that for you today. For those of us who are struggling with physical affliction today, our God is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. That is the God who is the King of Kings and He is the Lord of this house. If you are struggling with intellectual contamination, my God is Jehovah Shalom, the God of my peace. And He is my light, Adonai Yasha. To those of us today who are heartbroken, God is Jehovah Shama, an everlasting presence and he is near to the brokenhearted as he says in Psalm 147 verse 3 if you are here today and you are struggling with demonization maybe one of those demons slipped in somewhere just like he did for me many years ago I used to sit down just like you looking for where to get freedom and I was so desperate in fact it was when I got to a certain point of desperation that finally Jesus met me at the point of my need. You coming here today, it's a sign of a desperate faith. You are here because you believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He used to set the captives free and He still does. He set them free in the past, He will set you free today. God is Jehovah Mephalti, the Lord our Deliverer. As it says in Psalms 34, 19. Jesus Christ is here right now. Some of you are feeling it all over you already. The presence of God is all consuming. Let the God do what He needs to do today. Don't sit down here and watch and say, Oh, oh wow, that person, oh, oh, what's going on? They're screaming, they're crying. Don't focus on your left or your right. Today is your appointment with Jesus Christ. And He's ready to set you free. But as much as for this purpose that Jesus Christ was manifested, to destroy the works of the devil, it doesn't end there. Esther 4.14 presents an interesting question where Esther is being challenged and she is asked, maybe, perhaps, you have been raised for such a time as this. Not only are you here today to be set free, but you are here today because once we are set free, God wants to use you as a channel of light and a channel of salt. He wants to make you a, a channel of deliverance where there is darkness, a channel of freedom where there is bondage, a channel of healing where there is sickness. So don't take your, your testimony, your miracle today and I'm going to run back home and live my life. No, you have to be a light. You know what a light is? A light is someone who stands on the rooftops and says, once I was blind, but now I can see. Once I was sick, but now I am healed. Once I was bound, but now I am free. Who was it that set you free? I don't know their names. All I know is the name of Jesus. Because in that name has been invested all power and authority. Get ready right now. We're going to start prayer. But before we do that, I want to give an opportunity. The biggest miracle of them all is 
something is called salvation is when people come and lay their lives for Jesus and they say I will follow you until the end of days no matter good or bad times I will follow you Jesus until the end of days if you'd raise up rise up to your feet with me right now hallelujah I want to give an opportunity it would not be right for us to pray prayers of deliverance without first giving an opportunity for those who are here and they know that you are not at a right standing with Jesus the Son of God maybe you have never accepted him in your life you're here a family member dragged you here and you're like what is going on the guy up there is getting red I'm getting red because Jesus is worth getting red for and much more so if you are here today and you have never known Jesus or you used to know him but you have walked away from him I want to give you an opportunity right now with every eye closed and every head bowed Holy Spirit might be knocking on your door right now he's saying come back home son come back home daughter I want to have a relationship with you welcome me in let me come and take control of your heart if that is you today with no eyes open I want you right now to raise your hand and say yes I want to receive Jesus I want to lay my life for Jesus thank you I see 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 you all over the building right now if you're watching us online right now and you know that you are not correct with Jesus it doesn't matter what they define you you know in your heart of hearts that no I don't know this man they call Jesus I do not know him right now drop it in the chat I want to be saved I'm gonna give just five seconds more if there's anyone else in this building and the Holy Spirit is calling you home right now raise your hand as a declaration that you want to lay your life down for Jesus I see every single one of you we've got about 15 20 people in here that raised their hand right now thank you thank you I want you if you raise your hand say this prayer with me right now and church if you can join me as well people online this is for you as well this does is not a barrier for you to lay your life down for Jesus say this prayer say Lord Jesus here I am a sinner sinner I ask right now I ask right now forgive me of my sin forgive me of my sin and wash me with your blood and wash me with your blood I believe in my heart I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth and I confess with that you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. That you died on the cross. That you died on the cross. And you rose again for me. And you rose again for me. I welcome you in, Holy Spirit. I welcome you in, Holy Spirit. Be my friend. Be my friend. Be my guide. Be my guide. Be my banner. Be my banner. Be my shield. Be my shield. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For my salvation. For my salvation. In Jesus' mighty name, in we pray. Jesus' mighty name. Can we put our hands together for Jesus?